Hi guys, so today I'm going to give you a review of the book Hooked. The author of this book is Nireyar and in this basically he has discussed about the hook model. So hook model has four parts. The first and foremost part is the trigger. The second phase of hook model starts which is action. The third phase is the variable reward. After uh, the third phase comes the fourth phase which is investment. So in trigger what happens is uh, let's say you're browsing on your social account Facebook and there you encounter that two or three friends of yours have put pictures on Instagram. So the next thing which you'll do is you would want to go to Instagram, see their pictures, right? So once you go there, you would want to register yourself. And when you click on the register button, that is when the second phase of hook model starts, which is action. So in this action, what the habit forming products or the people who are giving who wish to give such habit forming services have to do is make this action part as effortless as possible for the users because users what they usually do is they try to go for such products or for such services which um, which doesn't force them to use much of their brain or which doesn't force them to put in more of their efforts for example let's say you were on instagram and when you were logging into it you saw that you had to fill in information for 10 different boxes wherein there was your name, there was your email address, there was your house address, your parents name and I don't know your phone number and many other things. So this is when it becomes very much difficult because here the users have to put in a lot of efforts. They have to invest in their time, they have to invest in uh, their brain. I mean I can say that because uh, they have to get used to that page. So uh, there'll be many people who'll be like, okay, let's just leave it and you know, let's just go and continue browsing on Facebook. Whereas, just imagine the second case scenario in which we see that there are only two or three buttons for registering. The first one is your email and the second one is your password. So when you do that, you make registering for Instagram for the new users effortless. And when it becomes effortless, you'll find that many people if not many, then at least the people who are coming on your site will stick to it. This is where you've completed your action part. So once the second part or the second phase of hook model is completed, you come on to the third phase. The third phase is the variable reward, as the name suggests, variable reward. So for you, see, their uh, users have come on your um, service or your product, they're using your product or they've come on your website and they've done the action, they've registered themselves. The third step is to keep them hooked. So how you're going to do that? For this, you need to ensure that your product or service doesn't become predictable. There has to be a certain element of variability because if variability is not there, people are not going to you know, come back to your site because they know okay, that's why we come back to the site and these things are going to be there. So for this, like if you see why Instagram and Facebook are working so well, apart from the need to be socially accepted, there's element of variability because every time you come on the site you'll see new pictures of your friends new videos of your friends wherein they're showing that they went to this place or other place they ate this food so the factor of variability is very much important uh, for this i'll give you an example um i guess somewhere in year 2008 or 2009 the game of palmville came on facebook and it became an instant hit because it was initially it was giving that variability to users so uh, the people who owned farmville then what they did was that they released various other series like city will or another will and suddenly there were so many wills in the market hoping that even these wills will do as better as some farmville but what happened was completely different these new wills which came up were completely predictable there was no variability in these games and that's the reason that all of them crashed. None of them functioned as well as Farmville. And after some time even Farmville died out. So that is the reason I say that an element of continuity has to be there in whatever product you're making or whichever service you're giving. After uh, the third phase comes the fourth phase which is investment. Now, whenever I say investment, many people might think that, oh, that okay, maybe this is monetary investment. But no, investments can be of many types. One factor is money, the other factor is time, and there are many other factors which come on. The time investment is in itself a very big thing. If users are coming and they are investing in your site, when I say investing, they are spending time on your site. 
For example, take an example of Quora. In Quora, what people do is that they come on your site and they put in answers. On Facebook, they are posting their pictures. On Instagram, also they are posting their pictures and videos. So this way, they are investing their time. They are saving their pictures there. They are basically creating an archive. So once users start investing in your site, the probability of the user coming back again and again, again and again to your site increases. And this is what you want. So you need to involve the users also. You need to ensure that people are investing in your site. And as I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary. It can be any sort of investment. If people are creating content for your site, even this is a kind of investment. So once these four stages of hook model are completed, as I told you, we started with what? We started with external trigger. So now we get on to the internal trigger. Once these things are finished, you don't have to necessarily push people to use your product or to use your service. What starts happening after this is the internal trigger. Once people have invested their time into it, once people have created content on it, once people have saved their content on it, they would want to come back onto it again because as I said, they've put in their efforts. For example, I'll give you um, an example of case study in which there were two groups of people in which one group was asked to make an origami of frog and the other one were given origamis like pre-made origamis and they were asked to bid for it. So obviously, the first group which made it by themselves had higher bids. Why? Because they had put in their efforts. So once people start putting in their efforts, they obviously value things more. So you need to understand that thing. So when internal trigger starts functioning, the probability of your product or service being more habit forming increases. Now there's also a graph for it, which is known as habit zone graph, which tells you ki if your product has the capability or if it has the potential to be in the habit zone. So for this, what happens is uh, we'll take an XY graph, wherein on the X axis, there'll be perceived utility and on the Y axis, there'll be frequency. Like um, what is the frequency of users using a product or service? So uh, the graph comes something like this, wherein a particular product for it to be habit forming, it has to have a certain frequency and a certain perceived utility. For example, uh, let's say we use Google. The frequency of us using Google is, as you all know, it's a lot. And we may use it for things which are not very important to us. Like we saw something, we wish to Google it, we'll Google it. So the frequency in this case is higher, even though perceived utility is less. But since the frequency is higher, the product is going to stay in the habit zone. If we take any product, its perceived utility is very high. But the frequency, the number of times people are coming back to it or wish to use your product is less, then it won't form in your habit zone. So you need to ensure that for your product to be habit forming, it has to have a certain perceived utility and it has to have a certain frequency. The audience has to keep repeating, has to come back and again, has to come again and again, which also sparks our debate of vitamins versus painkillers, which is uh, that if you're forming a product, should it be vitamins kind or the painkiller kind? If you see painkillers, then what is their feature? The feature of painkillers is that you have a problem and to solve your problem. Your stomach is aching, take painkillers. Your headache, pain, take painkillers. So this is how they solve the problems. Whereas if you see vitamins, they do not have any, uh, let's say they are not solving any immediate problem. Ki, uh, you had a headache, so you're taking vitamins. That is not how it works. Vitamins is something you take regularly. So you can build these two kinds of products, which is vitamins, as I said, and the other one is painkillers. So you, whenever people are forming products, they might want to get on the painkiller side. But once you sit down and have a thought on it, you'll realize that even vitamins can be very important because vitamins are something which people take subconsciously. They do not have to think of it. And that is how we want our product to be. For example, when Facebook started, uh, many people will say that it is still a vitamin, but just consider this thought. When it started, people were not very habitual to it. They just started using it for the sake of using it. They were being basically being used as vitamins. Like if you do not use them, you know, it's not going to affect you much. But afterwards, what happened is that it translated to painkillers. For example, um, let's say you're free and there's nothing you have to do. So what are you going to do in that free time? Majority of people, what they'll do is that they'll open their social media account. They'll open Facebook 
or Instagram or WhatsApp. So this basically what happens is that Facebook is satisfying their itch of killing the time. So this is how a vitamin can slowly translate into painkillers. Apart from it, heuristics also come into picture. Heuristics are basically uh, the shortcuts our minds take to get a work done. So uh, in short, basically that's whole, uh, that's the all of the hook model. That's all for the book.